What's going on, Aces? Welcome back to the channel. So let's get into this part two of the Carlos King Nini Leaks interview. So the first thing that struck me is part two begins with her talking about how she sued the network. And it's interesting because I don't understand how Nini wouldn't understand that if you sue Bravo TV, NBC Universal, Truly Original, Andy Cohen, et cetera, et cetera, I feel like she thinks that after a certain amount of time passes that they should just let it all go and accept her back with welcoming arms. And they're not going to do that. <laughs> okay. She talked about, you know, Andy Cohen and his alleged uh, substance use, abuse, whatever. Um, it's all alleged here. Everything I say on this video, by the way, <laughs> it's alleged. Okay. It's fair use in my opinion only, but it was just interesting that she, I don't know if she feels like they were on the same peer level as the rest of the housewives. She talked about how, you know, when she started way back in the day, that Bravo TV wasn't as big of a network as they are today. And so she could call the executives directly. And she, you know, had those direct line of communication. Whereas now, because they've grown and as they should, right, evolved with time, I feel like she, you know, she's like, well, you know, I can't, I don't have direct communication with them anymore. I have to go through secretaries and this person, this person, X, Y, Z. And it reminds me of someone who is stuck in the past, right? I've heard people say that she has arrested development, which basically means that she still feels like she is the HBIC, the head honcho, um, even though, you know, she hasn't been on the show for quite a while and she's not going to be invited back. So her and Carlos go on to talk about, you know, what, what she feels about Kim Zosiak and how Kim, you know, did not come to work. She didn't go on the group trips. She had, you know, Croy waiting for her, sitting in the car. She was talking about how she was the only white woman on the show and how she was, you know, just basically really condescending to all of her coworkers, all her cast members. And I absolutely agree. I don't think that Kim was a good addition to the show. I don't think that she should come back. I know she wants to come back because of all of her money issues and gambling debts <laughs> that she has. And I've made previous videos about that. You guys can go and watch to get caught up with her and Croy and all the money that they owe. But as far as Kim coming back on the show, I think not. So I'll let you guys hear Carlos ask Nini about coming back on the show, which is, again, I think it's delusional, but. Of this lawsuit, would you like to go back on Atlanta Housewives? Um, I can't say that I personally would just like to go back on Atlanta Housewives. However, the fans have all asked for me. And the fans are the reason for the ratings. They're the reason for the show being as popular as it is. And uh, if I had to go back, it would be 100% for the fans. Okay. Not the check. Um, the check is not a bad check. Although I think my check should be bigger. Uh, the check is not a bad check. <laughs> do you watch the show now? I do not watch the show. However, I have watched a lot of the clips that come down social media. I don't even know how to turn my TV on. I think everybody that knows me, including Andy Cohen, knows this about me. I don't watch TV. What do you think about the clips you've seen online? Um, I thought the clips online, well, they weren't, you know, that entertaining. Um, I've had the opportunity to meet a lot of the girls that are on the show currently. And um, just meeting them in person, they weren't entertaining or they were not like, uh, I just don't see any stars on the show if I, Okay, so let me go ahead and throw my commentary in here. First of all, I don't believe her when she says she doesn't watch the show because later on in an interview, she alludes to, you know, the friend of Courtney, I think, and Mon Monietta. 
and she just she talks a lot about the current season that's going on for her to to you know have that much information about the show i 100 percent believe that she watches even though she says she doesn't um and then again you know her deciding i guess who's a star and who's not a star she talks about um basically everybody being starless outside of her, which is spoken like a true narcissist, right? Again, I'm not a psychologist, but I will say that I've had quite a few psychology courses <laughs> in my tenure um, as a college student and graduate student. And I know quite a few narcissists. I know quite a few people who exhibit many character traits of someone with narcissistic personality disorder. Nini fits the bill, okay? Delusions of grandeur, um, you know, being very condescending, being very self-centered, self-involved. <sighs> she, she describes herself as the Beyonce of the Real Housewives of Atlanta. And I'm like, ma'am, um, you know, she said without, you know, there would be no Destiny's Child without Beyonce. But here's the thing, Beyonce left the group but Beyonce has a work ethic that double triples Nene Leaks, okay? Nene and, and Carlos, they talk about how she should be bigger than Kim Kardashian. And, and I'm laughing because the irony of that statement is Kim, you know, online, she says, get your up and work, right? Get your butt up and work basically was the sentiment. You know, she's like, nobody wants to work anymore. Kim K also has a very strong work ethic, right? And it's unfortunate because <laughs> Nini was talking about how, you know, she was supposed to be in works with a talk show uh, with Tom Arnold, and she got into it with Wendy Williams. Basically, they're the same person, in my in my opinion. I feel like they are from that same era. They both wear the <laughs> same blonde wigs, um, but they're they're both, you know. Um, media starlets who, you know, love the praise. And of course, I'm, you know, I'm praying for Wendy to get better and I hope that she recovers. Um, but I feel like her and Nini, especially with Nini, you know, in works with a talk show, a potential talk show with Den Denmar Mercury. But she said that once her and, Nini, or, and Wendy uh, fell out, she said that the, the talk show, you know, went away basically. And then she talks about wanting to start a podcast and all these different <laughs> and all these different avenues that have dried up. And I'm like, that's the difference between, you know, Nene and Candy, right? Candy doesn't wait for people to hand her something. Candy has her own YouTube channel, multiple, if I'm not mistaken. She has one for her son Ace. Um, she has one, I believe, for Candy Coated Live. And she has one for speak, speak on it. Okay. <laughs> um, Nini has a YouTube channel as well, but it's very like little content on there. So and she, if she wants to start a podcast, everybody named Mama has a podcast. Okay. You know, Cynthia actually went on Tamara Judd's podcast. I think it's Telly Mellencamp, Two Peds in a Pot or something like that. It's called where she was just saying, you know, clapping back about Nini calling her starless. She called Robin Dixon starless. She called all these people. And I'll make a separate video addressing that because I feel like, you know, Nini and Carlos, they are two peas in a pod. They're two people who are talking about their glory days back with Bravo TV. And I feel like they're stuck in the past. And I really wish that both of them would move forward no, Carlos did. <laughs> he did say that he wants to go on a tour with Nini, like a national tour, like a talk, like a sit down talk show, because she does. She has really great ideas. And she was saying, you know, instead of interviewing people in your shoe, you know, your sneaker closet with them in the background, you should have a setup face to face. And, you know, she said that's more personable. And she's right. I mean, she, you know, said that she gave Andy Cohen the idea for Watch What Happens Live. She has a lot of great ideas. It's her execution that's lacking a bit. So he's like, okay, well, you know, would you be on Love and Marriage 
Atlanta. She's like, well, I'm not married, but <laughs> and then she's like, you know, if I am on there, you have to have all these stars around me, honey. So, listen, like she is not Jean Jean Gabor, you know, Dominique Deborah. Like that's who I feel like she feels like she is in her mind, but. She's lacking the work ethic that Candy has. She's lacking the work ethic that Kim K has. Like, you know, or even Bethany, you know, she was saying how, and Bethany has a podcast. <laughs> she started her own podcast, okay? So Nene, open up that laptop that you closed season, I think it was 11, right? Um, when everybody was on Zoom and start your podcast. Like, <laughs> You can't wait for things to come to you. You have to create your own lane. And fortunately, we live in a digital age where we're able to make that happen. But I want to hear from you guys about this <laughs> this interview with part two. I feel like it was just two narcissistic peas in a pod, in my opinion. But if they do go on the road, uh, you guys let me know if you want me to cover that. And yeah, if you are new here, welcome. Please be sure to like the video, subscribe if you haven't done so already, and I will talk with you later. Take care, aces. Bye.